Schaefer, please stop sentence 2410. Mr. Schaefer, 2410. Okay, folks, uh, let me jump back to me. So here we are on the 23rd. 23rd. Um, let me just check something. 23rd. All right. So 23rd, still cold in here. All right. So I have moved from uh, my yeah, la, la, la. my original image. Oops. Oops. If I'm on the right camera. There we go. I have moved from the original image. Okay. And then I put it into um, the then I'll pick and apply that um, filter to it so it was more like a cubist painting, the Picasso filter effect. And then we put it into the art tutor and we went and gridded it so it was nine across and roughly 12 down to match our paper. Then we lightly gridded the watercolor paper and using our viewfinder we started sectioning off, sectioning off areas to lightly, super lightly draw. Okay. So, got a basic idea now. The last time we met, I started doing that eye, and man, I did it way too dark to show on the camera. So, uh, it's kind of still showing through. So, lightly, 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 because um, the paint is really going to take over for this beep, beep, beep. Um, the paint is really going to take over in this drawing um, and less of the, the pencil drawing. Okay, so uh, a light sketch. It doesn't have to be this crazy, super detailed image because we're going to change it up quite a bit. So before I start moving on, if you didn't do this on Friday, uh, this is where you want to clean up any of those little um, uh, guidelines, the ones that we use to kind of get all the proportion and the placement set. You really want to go through and take the time to knock all those out because uh, they will show through. So, and in the past art shows, I've had some beautiful, amazing paintings, and it was just unfortunate because once the student got all the way done, then they tried to go back and clean it up a little bit, and all it does is it, it erases or scrubs off the color, so you have this this grid over the painting that you can't really get rid of. Because once you lay that watercolor down, it don't. It's almost like it seals in the pencil, which it, it kind of does. Um, I'm not going to try to explain the science of that because I don't know, but. Try to clean up as much as you can. That's what I want to get at. All right. And she looks like she got a, a black eye there because I laid down the graphite too much. There's a lesson. Don't do that. Okay, so I've got this laid out. This is going to end up being very similar to the uh, still life where I'm going to start dropping some lines and um, through my image. So super light. Okay. This will blend in with our um, our paint because we're doing this light to dark thing, but um, we're breaking this into uh, what I would call like fractals, okay? little fractions. And you don't have to stick with just uh, straight lines. You can go in, that's not really a good circle because the bottom of it is dented. Why are these all dented? Here, I got it, I got it, I got it. Don't worry. So you could go and trace a plate or a mug and clean this up. And now what you would do if you were drawing a model in a cubist painting is, I mean, right now we have a head-on, straight-on look at the model. Now, you are the subject of your painting, so you can kind of, you can do this. I'm not going to require it, but um, let me go back to me for a second. All right, so a cubist 
painting, if you look through a diamond or a gem and it has all these facets and then you start seeing all these different angles, that's more of the idea of cubism where they were in a way trying to capture a 3D image in a 2D medium. So not only would you get my face here straight on, you would get the eye maybe a little bit to the left and then maybe a view of the nose all the way turned to the side. And then, so that's why a lot of the cubist paintings look so distorted. Uh, la, 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 la. Because we're seeing multiple views. Here's the side of the eye. Okay, there's the, a close-up of the eye with the eye here. And so, we're getting these multiple views at the same time, not so much in Picasso's self-portrait, but I don't know, a little bit where we're simplifying or abstracting the information um, and making it much more geometric in these facets. But this is a really good example. Um, I mean, the eyes are super wacko, but um, where you can see multiple angles and then they kind of left this one angle um, uh, with like, I don't know if the hands are up over the mouth or she's chewing on a, a handkerchief because she's become cubist or, but anyway, um, that's the idea. So back to what I'm doing. Um, so we're breaking this down into fractals. So I've got this circle here. I've got a couple lines um, and I can even have a shape like this is a big chunk of a shape here. Maybe I'm going to break it up a little bit where I'm going to just bring in this triangle right into that space. And that's how we're going to break it up into these fragments. A little closer. And he continues to fight with angles at the computer. Um, so that's really our next step. Uh, tomorrow what we're going to get into is, and it's super familiar, uh, we're going to get into the watercolor where um, we are going to start painting this uh, with the values light to dark. Uh, but one thing you do need, and I'm going to talk about tomorrow just in case you go and start doing this before I talk about it. This is a monochromatic color relationship. So let me go back to the computer. Um, and I'm going to talk about this in length tomorrow. But monochromatic meaning it's one color plus tints and shades. Okay, so here's the color the cyan kind of turquoise blue green color and by adding black to it or adding white to it it's the same color through the whole image okay and in this case it probably would have been like this kind of orangish tan and just by adding black or white to it makes up the whole image except for those you know the blue eyes there so in this one, I mean, there's, there's natural kind of skin tones here, but really the color that we're talking about is, is right here. It's this cyan, and it's just darker or lighter to make up the whole image. All right, so that is it for today, I think. Let me just check one more thing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to hand this back to Mr. Carlson, and he'll take it from there.